My God isn't finished yet If He didn't before, He will do it again So I'll trust Him with what comes next Cause my hindsight says Hello and welcome to Victory Church Online We're so glad that you could join us today In today's service, we will be taking communion Feel free to pause here to prepare some elements by grabbing a drink and some bread. During this time, as we meet online, we encourage you to stay connected on all our social media platforms. We so appreciate your giving during this time, Church. If you want to continue to do so, you can through an online bank transfer or through the Tithely app. Would you now join us as our team leads us in worship, followed by communion and a message. As I reflect, I find perspective. They're in the best and worst days of this life. You are always on my side. And on the days the furnace finds my faith You're the fourth within the flames I don't need Yes, we can. For the God I know 
I don't need to know what the future says If the past could talk, it would tell me this I don't need to know what the future says If the past could talk, it would tell me this I don't need to know what the future says Cause if the past could talk, it would tell me this I don't need to know what the future says Your praises with a mighty roar, we sing your. 
Hi Church, my name's Kerry, for those of you who don't know me, and uh, this morning I've got the privilege of sharing with you for our time of communion. Um, for those of you who don't know me well, I'm very much an outdoorsy person. Um, I love being outside, I love being in the bush, I'm interested in plants and animals, birds, insects, all those types of things. And for me personally, I often find that that's where God speaks to me. Um, I'll be out in the garden or doing something outside and I'll just notice some little detail and God just deposits something in my heart through that little picture. So this morning, I just wanted to share with you something that happened during the week and um, I hope it can encourage you um, in where you're at today. Uh, the kids and I have been doing homeschooling since the start of term and uh, <clears throat> shout out there to all the parents who've been working hard teaching their kids. We're nearly there. Um, but obviously it can be a bit full on so we were taking a bit of a brain break and uh, spending some time outside getting some fresh air and having a run around. All of a sudden the kids um, called out to me and said, Mum, come and have a look at all these moths. So I went round to the front of our house and noticed 50 or 60 of these huge moths um, on the front bricks of our house. So we went over closer to have a look and we noticed that there were quite a few on the ground as well. Um, some of them had actually already died and there were quite a few that were just sort of flapping around and obviously in the process of dying. So I knelt down on the ground and was having a closer look and all of a sudden I noticed something amazing going on. All of these dying moths were actually in the process of laying their eggs. All these little tiny piles of moth eggs were being laid by these dying moths. And you know, in that very instant, God just said to me, Kerry, you know, this is a picture of what I've done for you. You know, this is a reminder of the sacrifice that Jesus made for you when he died on the cross. Through his death, I've given you life. And uh, it was just a really beautiful, a beautiful moment. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And in John 3:17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You know, just like these dying moths, they actually are found out they actually only live for about 24 hours. So they hatch out of their cocoon, they lay their eggs, and then they die. Jesus had an important ministry here on earth you know there were things that he needed to do while he was here on earth but at the end of the day his ultimate purpose in coming as a man was so that he could take the sins of the world and nail them to the cross through his body and that he could be raised again so that we can have the promise and the gift of eternal life and you know, I guess I was just sort of thinking that perhaps there might be some people at the moment with everything that's going on in the world that might be feeling like 
they're not actually living. You know, you might be feeling like because you can't do the things you used to do and you're restricted that you don't feel like you've got life the way it's meant to be. You know, you might feel like you're going through the motions and just surviving. Well, I just wanted to encourage you this morning um, to use this time as you take the bread and drink the cup just to reaffirm and declare over yourself the life that you've been given through Jesus. And you know that there is nothing, nothing on this earth that can ever change that. You know, it's a gift that's been given to us from God the Father and nothing on this earth, no powers, no kingdoms, no authorities, no COVID-19 can ever take that away and can ever change that. So let's just take time to thank him now for what he's done. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the sacrifice that you made on the cross for us. We thank you that you were willing to die so that we can have life. And Lord, this morning, we just take the time to declare that over ourselves. We speak life into those situations that might seem hopeless. We speak life over our families. We speak life over those who need healing. And we speak life over our nation today. Thank you for your precious shed blood. Thank you for your broken body. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you, church. Hey church, hope you're going well. It's Pastor Steve here, if you don't know me. Uh, we're at the Heather's Farm. It's really, really cold today, so excuse me if I keep my hands inside my jacket because it is freezing. You know, in these times, there's a lot of uncertainty that's going on. There's a lot of things that are uncertain, even simple things, what we can and what we can't do. Uh, can I go on a holiday in the future? Uh, what's happening in the stock market. There's all kinds of things where there's a lot of uncertainty. The other week I was, I was just waking up early and I just felt the Holy Spirit just begin to speak to me. And He began to speak to me about this season and this time and what God's people need to do. And I was just led to this scripture. And the scripture is a simple one. It's found in the Old Testament in the book of Habakkuk. It says this, that the just shall live by faith. You know, when that was written, it was actually written at a time when the nation of Judah uh, was, was actually in a huge place of uncertainty. No one was really sure what the future was going to look like or what was going to happen. And he wrote those words that the just shall live by faith. That thought and that idea just started to spur within me that I believe at this time and in this season right now, what God wants from us as His people is to be people that are living by faith, not living by circumstances, not living by things which are up and down, not living by uncertainty, but actually people of faith and confidence who are actually confident about their God and confident about what He is going to do in their lives. This thought of uh, the just living by faith is actually carried into the New Testament. And three times is actually mentioned in the New Testament. It's mentioned first in the book of Romans. Paul, when he writes there, he talks about the just. That's what he emphasises. And so he talks about how we're justified, made right with God. And it's not the conditions. And he talks about the conditions which we need to do and fulfil to be seen right before Him. Then in Galatians, Paul again stresses that it's by faith. He talks about the fact that we ha don't have the ability to fulfill the law by ourselves. We can only fulfill it by faith in Jesus Christ. Then we have the one which I want to talk to you about today, which is found in Hebrews chapter 10 in uh, verse 35. It says this, You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. For in just a little while, He who is coming will come and not delay, but my righteous one will live by faith. 
and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. But we are not those who shrink back and are destroyed. We are those who believe and are saved. In this passage of Scripture, Paul's writing to the church. He's saying, church, you need to keep persevering. You need to keep living in faith. You can't afford to shrink back. And I believe right now in this time and in this season, God's saying to His people, we can't afford to be people that are living in uncertainty. We've got to be people that are living by faith. I love the fact that the whole book of Hebrews is talking about endurance. It's talking about keep on going. It's talking about that position which we need to continually stay in. And I want to challenge you today about staying in faith in this season. Over the coming weeks, we're going to be talking a lot about faith. We want to uh, speak about faith because we want to stir your faith in this season so that you can say, I am living by faith. Do you know this morning, I want to talk to you about one particular thing I've just felt stirring in my heart. What is your confession of faith? Well, as soon as I said that word confession of faith, maybe for some of you, you winced a little. I know that for many people, the thought of a confession of faith has actually, because of what some people have done to it, where they've extended it perhaps beyond the borders which God intended, you you wince a little bit because you're not really sure uh, what you feel about that or even what you think about that. And sadly for some people, they've gone and moved away from even making any confession of faith for fear of overreaching what God actually has for us. And this morning, I just want to simplify what our confession of faith is. What does it actually look like? When we talk about a confession of faith, what should it be? The book of Hebrews helps us in this. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, it says this, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters, partners in a heavenly calling, take note of Jesus, the apostle and the high priest whom we confess. This word, which is translated here, confess, in some versions may say profess. Some versions will even say declare, but the correct word is confession. It comes from a Greek word, homologia. And that word means this, it's a, it's a combination of two words, homo, meaning the same, and logia, meaning the word. And so what it's actually saying here, it's giving us the idea of the same word. In other words, what our confession of faith is, is us saying the same word that God says. It's actually us coming into an agreement and an alignment with what God speaks. So when we talk about a confession of faith, all we're doing is saying the same word which God says. We're repeating what He says. Generally, the confession of our faith is around who we are in Christ and the inheritance which we have in Him. If you think of Romans chapter 10, it says this. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. But if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified and it's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. So our confession is really us saying the same thing as the Father says. So when we say Jesus is Lord, we're actually saying the same thing, the same words which God says about who Jesus is for us. We are coming into an agreement and an alignment with what Jesus is and who His person is. When we do this, an incredibly powerful thing begins to happen in our lives. I think of Abram. Abraham, before he became Abraham. I, I love the fact that in the story that he was he was had this name already, but God says, no, I'm going to change your name from exalted father to father of many nations. God changed his name. And when God changed his name, he came into agreement with that name change. And each and every day as he was, he says, no, my name is Abraham. He was walking in alignment and saying the same words which God spoke over Him. And that's what God wants for your life and mine, to actually come into an agreement and confess the same things that He confesses over you. Not confessing the things you think about yourself, not confessing the thing way you see the world, but actually coming into a confession of what He speaks over you and what He sees for you. Now, we do need to be careful with this. Sometimes people can get a little bit confused about what a confession of faith looks like. We have to understand this 
that there are general promises and provisions that are applicable to all of us as Christians and we all have access to them. But in the Bible, there are other promises that are made to individuals. One of the most classic I would probably say is Peter. When he walked on the water, I don't know how many times people have said to me, you know what, if Peter walked on water, I'm gonna walk on water too. Now, Jesus' word to Peter to walk on water is not a general promise to everyone. If you don't believe me, you can go and try it in Lake Epilogue and see how it works for you. But what we do understand this is that when we come into a confession of faith, it's saying the Word of God and what God says over you and repeating that. We say it because He said it. We can't take this confession to any idea we choose. It must be something that He has said either to us or through His Word to us. So what should our confession of faith actually look like? Well, there's a couple of things it shouldn't look like, which is sometimes easy to, really easy to define. We shouldn't be expressing doubt, fear, unbelief, or even negative attitudes. What God is actually looking for from us is found in Psalm 1914. And I love this Psalm, it says this, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. I love the heartbeat of what he's saying. It's really important to notice what he's saying. He's, he actually says these words. He says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Do you know at times all of us are going to have thoughts. Thoughts, we can't help it when thoughts of fear, doubt, worry, anxiety, all these things come to us. It's natural to have these thoughts. But what he says here, he doesn't say the thoughts. He actually says what I meditate upon. And I wanna tell you in this season and in this time, you are gonna have thoughts which come to you. But you have a choice on what you choose to meditate on. You have a choice what you choose to allow to come out of your mouth. Those thoughts are gonna come, but what are you gonna exalt? What are you gonna say? Are you gonna say the things, the same words which God says? Or are you gonna make your words and make your own confession on what you believe is happening in your life. See, there's a difference between a thought and allowing yourself to continually stay in a place and a way of thinking. Once I remember early on in my pastoral career, as I was working, I, I met with a man and he said to me, I, I've got this fear that I'm gonna get cancer. It just, it's always with me. And, and I think about it all the time. I think what will happen to my family. I've even said to my wife many times, I think I'm gonna die of cancer. I, I was so shocked by what he said, but over the journey of life, I found there's many people who meditate on things which are not God's intention for them. They're not God's heart for them. They're not even what God would want for them, but they meditate on it and they begin to confess it with their mouth. And then they wonder why their relationship with God, they find it hard to enter into relationship and, and be in His presence and trust in Him. It's because they're coming to Him. Not like this says, where Lord, you look at my words, the things that I'm saying and the things I'm meditating on, that they're acceptable to you. We're actually coming to Him with our unbelief. God doesn't want your unbelief. He wants your belief. And sometimes that comes through what we meditate on and what we confess with our mouth. And sometimes we need to change our confession. Sometimes it's hard to know if you change your confession, well, what does that actually look like? Well, I'm gonna help you out this morning. Maybe for so long there's been a negative dialogue. Maybe there's been things which you confess. Maybe there's been things which you've been meditating on which you need to change this morning. So I'm gonna give you five practical things that you this morning can begin to say, I'm gonna change my confession. I'm gonna change what I'm meditating on and what comes out of my mouth. The first one is this, is found in 2 Timothy 1.7. And it's as simple as this. If you don't know what your confession should be, I encourage you pull out the Bible and begin to see the same word, the words which God speaks over you. Because He speaks words over your life, words of life, words of comfort, words of reassurance that He wants to bring. 2 Timothy 1.7 says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love and self-discipline. 
I wanna tell you today, no matter what your circumstance, you are not powerless. Sometimes when we come along, we, we speak out, I'm powerless in this. I wanna tell you this morning what God's Word, the same Word that He speaks over to you, I wanna hear from your mouth. I am not powerless in my situation. I'm not powerless in my circumstance today. What about Proverbs 3, 5 and 6? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. You know, right now your paths may look crooked. It may look like you don't know which way you to go. You don't even know how to get to where you wanna end up. But I wanna tell you today, you need to start making a confession over your life that what God is gonna do is He's gonna make your path straight. You may not understand how to get there, but He is actually gonna take the kinks out, the things which you think uh, it's gonna stop me from getting there. He is gonna remove and He is gonna make your path straight. What about second? Corinthians 9, 8 says, And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. What about God's blessing? Hey, I wanna tell you that God's blessing is on you right now, even in this season. Even today, His hand is upon you and He's gonna give you everything you need to do every good work that He has in store for you. Stop thinking that you don't have enough. Start confessing that I have enough to do everything He's called me to do. Everything that He's put on my heart, everything that He says over me, I will fulfill. What about John 14, 27, when Jesus said these powerful words, peace I leave with you. My peace Peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. You know, today, maybe you just need to make a confession that the peace of God is with me today. I will not live in fear. I will not live in a place where I'm thinking, oh, what's gonna go wrong next? I choose to live in a place of peace today. Make that the confession over your life. What about James 1.5? If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Right now, you might be in a situation where you go, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what decision to make. I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to change things. I'm really unsure. And you can be sitting in that place of uncertainty today and you can either confess your uncertainty or you can begin to confess that God is gonna give you wisdom from heaven in the right time, in the right season. He's gonna, and when you need it, it's gonna be there. And you can begin to confess that, Lord, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now, but I believe by faith that I confess that at the right time and when I need to make that decision, wisdom from heaven is gonna come down and it's gonna to begin to fall on my life and I'll know the exact path that you have for me. Do you know right now, I don't know uh, what's going on in your life. I don't know where you're at, but I wanna tell you this. I believe that God is calling His people right now to live by faith, not to live by uncertainty. And what's really important is what we're confessing in this moment. I wanna challenge you around what are you confessing over your life? What promises are you standing on today, speaking over your life, believing by faith? I wanna tell you in so much uncertainty, it's easy to become like the people of the world, full of uncertainty, full of doubt. But I wanna tell you, God wants to stir your faith because the just shall live by faith. I love what it says in Hebrews because it was talking about our ongoing faith wasn't talking about just a one-off event. It was saying that we need to live each and every day in the faith that God has for us. And our confession should be this, Lord, the same words which You speak over me, I speak over myself and my circumstances. I come into agreement with them today. And my confession today is all the things that You've promised for me. Can I encourage you this week? I wanna encourage you this week, stand on some of the promises of God over your life. Some of the things which He's written in His Word to you, begin to lay hold of them, begin to say, I speak these things, even though they may not be happening right now, I see that God is gonna be faithful and I'm gonna stand in faith in this season. I'm gonna pray for you this morning, church. Father, I thank You this morning for every person that's listening. I pray today that Lord, no matter what their circumstances, they'll speak the same Word, the same Word that You speak over them. Father, every promise that You have for them, everything that You want them to confess, I pray that, Lord, You would lift the meditation of our heart and the words of our mouth to a position of faith where we are not going along 
thinking about things that we should not be thinking about. But Lord, we would take captive those thoughts. We would watch what comes out of our mouth. And instead of expressing doubt, worry, anxiety and fear, that Lord, we would be people that live by faith in this season and living into the purposes of God and everything that You have for us. In Jesus' Name, Amen and Amen. Hey, I hope you're encouraged today. Can I encourage you? really want to encourage you. Get around the Word of God this week. Push into His promises and believe all the things that He has for you. God bless you, church. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for Victory Church Online today. If you were impacted by the message of Jesus today or just want to talk to someone, you can contact us through the details that are on the screen now. If you're a part of our Victory Church family and you need support in any way through this season, you can also contact us through the details that are on the screen now. Thank you so much for joining us online for church today. We love you and we're praying for you and we look forward to seeing you online next week.